Welcome to part 45 of Model Steam Engines and Boilers, milling the connecting rod fork and cleaning up the part manually. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. And this one is where I get it more or less right, and I end up with a really nice connecting rod. The connecting rod, however, is still in the lathe. I do need to remove a little bit more material from the forked end. And in this clip, using my parting tool, very gently, I do this. When I look at this job, I can't help but think it would be far easier to fabricate this part. Especially from a beginner's point of view, because this is not an easy job. Honestly, it's not an easy job. There are so many pitfalls. I fell into pitfall number one by drilling the holes in the wrong place, but that was just stupidity. At the start of each day when I'm making my breakfast, some of the sequence of breakfast making goes wrong. That's because my mind is elsewhere. It's usually in the workshop by the time I'm making my breakfast. The fish-bellied connecting rod is now starting to look like a fish-bellied connecting rod. It's a bit too long at each end. This was intentional. Subscribed a couple of lines at each end and cut the rod to the correct length on my bandsaw. Let the milling operation commence. Now is a good time to check that the milling cutter is exactly in the centre of the piece of bar. And when it is, you can carry on to the end of the slot. I've set the table limiter, as you can see here, so now it's back to the job to mill all the way through it. At this stage, if you're a beginner, this job may be nerve-wracking, and at this stage, if you're not a beginner, this job may also be nerve-wracking, because if you make a mistake now, it's back to the beginning. For quite a while when I was a beginner to this sort of thing, I used to make the part three times. Part one, mark out the component. And once I'd finished marking out the component, I realised it was in the wrong place, but that was after I'd drilled the holes, which were also the wrong size. On the second attempt, I would generally get much further until it came to the milling operation, which would foul up. But usually by the third attempt, I had a completed component. And that's why I'm not ashamed about part 28 of this series when I drilled the holes in the wrong side of the connecting rod. This time, I'm being extra specially careful and thinking about the job because I don't want to have to start over if I do it wrong. The slot is now milled and the piece of 3 8 steel fits in it perfectly. This piece of steel will be cross drilled and machined to fit on the end of the piston rod. I thought it was a good idea to use it as a gauge. In this shot you can see just how well the piece of 3 8 square bar fits in the slot. I couldn't show much of this next job, nor did I want to really. I had to concentrate so much not to foul up at this stage. What I'm doing at the moment is rounding the big end. This fits onto the crank pin. It's currently too wide and it will need some more machining to make it the right size. After a while the part looks like this. It's a bit rough and it's going to need quite a lot of work with wet or dry sandpaper and oil. I would say in reality to clean up this rod using the wet or dry sandpaper not including doing it in the lathe, but on the bench like this, took about 25 minutes. And I've spared you that. Here's the part after quite a few rubbings. And here's the other end of the part after quite a few rubbings on the wet or dry sandpaper. You can really go to town and shape these parts beautifully using a needle file, but beware, the needle file must not touch the main shaft. It's quite a good idea to apply some masking tape to the fish bellied part of the rod to stop it getting marked. It's time now to machine the big end to the correct width, as shown on the drawing. I don't show the drawings because they are actually copyright to Stuart models. I've fitted the connecting rod back into the milling machine, 
once again on the two pieces of mahogany, making sure that the rod is perfectly horizontal, because I do not want to spoil the job by milling the big end tapered. I really would like some more professional machine tools, but by using these machine tools and showing that yes you can make all sorts of things using them, it's encouraging for beginners who possibly have worse ones than these. When I was setting up my recording studio in 1983, originally the equipment that I amassed was quite modest. Most of the sound equipment was adequate, but the microphones were terrible, I just couldn't afford the good ones. And when I bought good quality microphones about two or three years later, the results were staggeringly better. I used them in the same way as I used the cheap microphones, but because they were good, I got excellent results. You can't beat having good quality equipment. The microphone that I use for these voiceovers is called a Neumann U87. I'm brand new with the microphone suspension mount. I think I paid about £2,000 for this. And over the years I've used it in the recording studio for recording some superb vocal performances. And by that I do not mean my vocal performance, I just talk into it. The wet to dry sandpaper method of cleaning up the parts is still underway. And here's where I've got to. There's quite a bit more polishing to do to this. I want my connecting rod to look like a connecting rod that you'd find on a full size engine. As you can see by this close up, I still have quite a way to go. In the next episode, I'll be machining this piece of 3 8 steel, which will screw onto the end of the piston rod. It will also need cross drilling and reaming to take a long pin that holds the cross head in place. But that is it for this episode. I'd like to say, as always, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.